Fancy isn't really my thing, so I was kind of trying to dismiss it. But then Sayuri jumped in and took over the conversation. I should have reflected on that, but I didn't, because I just let Sayuri handle it instead. And now I'm repeating the same mistake, except I really hurt someone this time. Monica shakes her head. I'm so tired of being afraid of things I'm not comfortable with. I'm so stupid. Like, I can just picture how much joy it would bring Natsuki if I let her share her passion a little. I'm so angry that her friends were treating her like that. I'm going to get them back for it. And get them back? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get them back by making sure that this is the literature club that Natsuki wants, not the one that they want. Suddenly Sayuri bursts through the door making Monica and Yuri jump. With a rare stern face, she marches over to Monica's desk and sits down next to her. I'm having an intervention! I can do that because I'm vice president! Is this about Natsuki? Yeah! Yeah, I know. I messed up. I'm super sorry. I was just talking to Yuri about it. Really? I was so dismissive about her passion that she felt threatened and probably just unwelcome. Literally the opposite of what the literature club was supposed to be. I really need to make it up to her. Oh. Yay, I did it! <laughs> Thanks for the intervention, Sayuri. I'm glad we're on the same page. Friendship wins again! So how do you want to make it up to her? I have a plan. Siri, do you know if Natsuki is coming to the club meeting today? She's... I don't think she is. I see. Monica was afraid of that. Not because of her plan, but because she's facing the consequences of the damage that she's inadvertently caused. But the only way to do the right thing is to face it head on. It's so easy to just duck away from conflict and wait for it to blow over. But that's not enough. To truly respect someone's feeling after you've hurt them is to face them and admit your wrongdoing. Not the wrongdoing of mismanaging the club, but the wrongdoing of disrespect respecting Natsuki's feelings. Okay, do you think you can get her to come to the meeting tomorrow? I can do that! Okay, awesome. Yuri, you don't have to worry about anything, but thank you for being my friend. You're a good listener. Fidgeting with her hair, Yuri turns away to hide a smile. Ah. Well, I guess for today, it's going to be a pretty quiet club meeting. I'm gonna step out for a bit, is that okay? Yeah, I'm just gonna read with Yuri. Hey, is this one of Natsuki's books? How come it's out here? Suri picks up a manga that was resting on the adjacent desk. Oh, that? Um, Natsuki probably just left it out by accident. But I thought she hasn't been coming to the club. Actually, Monica's been... Okay, Yuri, I'm sure it was just someone else who was using this classroom then, okay? Monica smiles at them both. Then with a wave, she exits the club room. <laughs> she just doesn't want to admit that she, uh, she was reading it. I really shouldn't have left that out. If Siri catches on, she'll definitely tell Natsuki. And that would get really awkward. Now, I wonder if there's a keyboard I could borrow from the music room. The time for the next club meeting has already arrived. Monica and Yuri are the first to arrive. I'm so worried. Do you think Sayuri is going to be able to bring Natsuki? Yeah. How do you know? Well, she's Sayuri. Um... You know, you're right. Time slowly passes. Monica sits, then stands up to pace around, then sits again. Yuri's eyes don't move from her book. Then the door finally opens. Sayori marches inside. Behind her, Natsuki shuffles inside, nervously looking around the room. We're here! Welcome back. Monica, the club president, stands up with and greets them with a smile. Sayori picks a desk and takes a seat. Natsuki sits closely next to her. Looking back and forth between the club members, Monica is struck with a nostalgic feeling. She would stand at the front of the club room just like this, struggling to picture just who may eventually be sitting before her. But imagination was never enough to predict just how unique and diverse each member would be. Each with their own struggles, her own reasons for seeking the vision that Monica had admittedly so vaguely advertised. Seeking trust, understanding, respect. What new lessons will the future hold for the literature club? Realizing she's getting ahead of herself, Monica takes a deep breath and returns to the present. Okay, everyone. The Literature Club is starting. We have an activity planned for today. Monica turns around to face the chalkboard. On it, she writes manga in big letters. Today, we're going to learn from an expert about unique form of literature. Manga. Oh, come on! Isn't this kind of forced? I know you don't actually want to do this, so just... Monica shakes her head. Natsuki. This is the hardest part. After making it this far, it would be just so easy to just smile and move on. But that's not enough. Not this time. I'm sorry. It was wrong for me not to take you seriously when you were kind enough to show interest in my club. I thought about it, and I realized how biased I was against manga. It caused me to disrespect you, and I'm sorry. But I think you deserve to be able to share your passion with us. So, can I make it up to you? Well, thanks, but I know you're only doing this because Sayuri told you to. Wait, that's not true! Monica planned this by herself! I didn't even get a chance to talk to her! I was witness to that as well. This is the Literature Club. The Literature Club is a place where everyone gets to be themselves. We all have our own interests and our own differences. It's my vision to let 
let us freely express that. And it's my goal to respect everyone for them. So I just want to learn about the things that make you happy. I think that you deserve to share that joy as much as everyone else does. Is that okay? Natsuki looks away and hesitates. But it's really dumb, the stuff I'm into. Marka smiles. She kneels in front of Natsuki's desk, looking her straight in the eye. If you like it, then it's not dumb. Oh, except for me. Sayori, you're not dumb either. <laughs> what the heck? You guys are so weird. Fine, I'll show you some of my manga. Only because you admitted that it's literature after all. Natsuki stands up. Oh yeah, I didn't say this before, but I'm actually into writing too. I'm kind of a pro, but I didn't want you to like me just for that. Wow, really? I really did have you all wrong, Natsuki. Yeah, whatever. Today's not about that, right? It's about manga, so I hope you're ready. A week has passed since Natsuki returned to the literature club. Since then, the club activities have been in full swing. Each club member had received a day in the spotlight to share all of their favourite kinds of literature with each other. As another meeting draws to a close, Monica approaches Natsuki on the way out. Natsuki, are you in a hurry home or anything? Me? Not particularly. Why? Oh, there was just something that I wanted to show you if you had a few minutes. Sure, what is it? It's not in here. Can you follow me to the music room? The music room? Why? Well, you'll see. Oh, I think it's- Oh, this is cool! Oh, man! My home turf! When I used to do music in college. Of course, it wasn't as fancy looking as this, but still, man. Anyway, sorry, I just have to- I'm just looking around the room, because it's so nice looking. You know, I was thinking back. When the club was just me and Sayori, we would talk about how we envisioned the club to turn out. We heard a lot about it being a place where people could express themselves. And she said something strange to me. She said that I was trying to make the club that I needed myself more than anyone. But I think it wasn't until you joined that I fully understood that. Because you really taught me a lot about myself. Like things that I was probably always too stubborn to admit. Oh come on. You can't mean that. I didn't even do anything. I just like brought a bunch of manga and then I got fussy when I didn't have my way. It was really stupid of me to make such a big deal out of it. No, I honestly needed it. If you didn't express that you were hurt, I would have never realized that I did something wrong. Besides, your feelings are valid. They deserve to be heard and respected. It's just really hard to feel that way sometimes. You know, like, I really shouldn't care about what other people think in the first place. But when you're just criticized by everyone around you for being a certain way, it can really get hard to just brush it off. And it makes me start to feel like I'm the problem. Like, I'm not doing...